explanation the rhyme of the ancient mariner is the longest major poem by the english poet samuel taylor coleridge written in 1797 to 1798 the rhyme of the ancient mariner relates the experiences of a sailor who has returned from a long sea voyage It is an ancient mariner and he stoppeth one of three. In these lines, an old mariner stops one of the three wedding guests. Here, the meaning of the word ancient is very old. Mariner means sailor. By thy long grey beard and glittering eye, no wherefore stoppest thou me? In these lines, the wedding guest asked the grey bearded and glittering eyed old mariner why he had stopped him. The meaning of the word wherefore is why. The word glittering means shining brightly. The word stoppest means stop. And thou means you. The bridegroom's door are open wide and I am next of kin. In these lines, the wedding guest reminds the old mariner that he is going to the wedding feast. Here, the meaning of the word bridegroom is the boy to be married. The doors of the bridegroom are open wide. He further tells him he is one of the close relatives of the bridegroom. The word kin means member of the family. The guests are met, the feast is set. In these lines, the wedding guest tells the mariner that the guests have arrived. The feast has been laid. The meaning of the word feast means banquet. The word set means laid. May steer the merry din. He further tells the mariner that he can hear the happy noise coming from there. Here, the meaning of the word merry is happy. He holds him with his skinny hand. In these lines, the poet tells that the old sailor held the wedding guest with his skinny hand. The word skinny means skin hanging down. There was a ship, quoth he. The sailor narrated that there was a ship. Here, the meaning of the word quoth is said. Hold off, unhand me, greybeard loon. In these lines, the wedding guest asked the sailor to hold off and free his hand. Here, the meaning of the word Hold off is free. The word unhand means leave my hand. He then called the old mariner a grey-bearded madman. Here, the word loon means madman. Eftsoons, his hand dropped he. The old sailor then took away his hand at once. The meaning of the word eftoons is at once. The word dropped means dropped.
he holds him with his glittering eye. In these lines, the poet tells that the sailor kept the wedding guest with his glittering eyes. The phrase holds him means keeps under his spell. The wedding guest stood still. He further tells that the wedding guest could do nothing as he stood still silently. The meaning of the word still is motionless. And listens like a three years child. The mariner hath his will. Here, the poet tells that the wedding guest listened to the tale of the mariner like a three year old child. The mariner got what he wanted. The phrase hath his will means got what he wanted. The poet further adds on that the wedding guest had no choice except listening to his story. The wedding guest sat on a stone, he cannot choose but hear. In these lines, the poet tells that the wedding guest sat silently on a stone. He had no choice but hear the tale of the old mariner. And thus spake on that ancient man, the bright-eyed mariner. Here, the poet says that the bright-eyed mariner continued narrating his story to the wedding guest. The ship was cheered, the harbour cleared. In these lines, the poet tells that the people cheered off the ship and it steered clear out of the harbour. The word cheered means welcomed. Merrily did we drop. He further tells that the sailors very happily dropped down the sails. The meaning of the word merrily is happy. Below the kirk, below the hill, below the lighthouse top. In these lines, the poet states that the ship passed through the church, hill and below the top of the lighthouse. Here, the meaning of the word kirk is church. The sun came up upon the left, out of the sea came he. In these lines, the poet states further that the sun rose in the left. It seemed to come out of the sea. And he shone bright and on the right went down into the sea. States further that the sun rose in the left. It seemed to come out of the sea. Higher and higher every day till over the mast at noon. In these lines, the poet says that the sun rose higher and higher every day till it reached over the mast at noon. Mast is the central pole in the ship. The wedding guest here beat his breast. In these lines, the wedding guest started beating his breast. The phrase beat his breast means becoming restless and worried. For he heard the loud bassoon. The old mariner was detaining him. He could hear the loud sound of the bassoon, a musical instrument being blown in the wedding party. The bassoon is a musical instrument. The bride hath paced into the hall. Red as a rose is she. In these lines, the poet tells that the bride entered the wedding hall with quick steps. He tells further that her face looked red 
as a red rose. Here, the meaning of the word paste is entered with quick steps. Nodding their heads before her goes the merry minstrelsy. In these lines, the poet says that the singers and musicians went past her, nodding their heads. The word nodding means shaking. The meaning of the word minstrelsy is singers and musicians. The wedding guest, he beat his breast, yet he cannot choose but hear. In these lines, the poet states that the wedding guest could only beat his breast in despair. The wedding guest was detained by the old sailor and couldn't reach the wedding party in time. The poet further states that the wedding guest had no choice but to listen to the old sailor's tale. The meaning of the phrase, beat his breast, is become restless and worried. And thus spake on that ancient man, the bright-eyed mariner. In these lines, the poet says that the bright-eyed old sailor went on narrating his story. And now the storm blast came, and he was tyrannous and strong. In these lines, the mariner further narrates that a very powerful storm blast came on the ship. It was very severe and harsh. Here, the word tyrannous means severe and harsh. He struck with his o'er-taking wings and chased us south along. In these lines, the mariner further narrates that the storm struck the ship with its long-reaching wings. It chased the ship and the sailors towards the south. Here the phrase o'er-taking wings means long-reaching wings. The meaning of the word struck is attacked. With sloping masts and dipping prow, as who pursued with yell and blow. In these lines, the mariner tells that the effect of the storm was terrible. The masts were slightly bent. The prow dipped in water. He further tells that the ship was moving as if it was being chased by a crying and attacking enemy. Here, the meaning of the word pursued is chased. The phrase with yell and blow means with crying and attacking. Still treads the shadow of his foe and forward bends his head. In these lines, the mariner narrates that the ship was moving as if it was being chased by a crying and attacking enemy. It was still under the shadow of its enemy or storm. The sailor adds that the ship bent its head forward. The word treads means walks. Ship drove fast, loud roared the blast, and southward I we fled. In these lines, the sailor tells that the ship bent its head forward and drove fast. The storm roared loudly. He further adds on that the ship fled southward. The meaning of the word I is yes. The meaning of fled is ran away. And now there came both mist and snow, and it grew wondrous cold. In these lines, the sailor tells that both mist and snow came suddenly. All of a sudden, it grew very cold. Mist is fog-like. 
The meaning of the word wondrous is great. An ice mast high came floating by, as green as emerald. In these lines, the sailor tells the wedding guests that the icebergs looked like green emeralds. They came floating on the sea as high as the mast. Emerald is a transparent bright green stone. Mast is the pole on the ship. And through the drifts, the snowy cliffs did send a dismal sheen. In these lines, the sailor narrates that through the floating pieces of ice and steep icebergs came a sad but gentle light. The place was totally deserted. Here the meaning of the word drifts is floating pieces of ice. Cliffs are the steep sides of icebergs. The meaning of the word dismal is deserted. The word sheen means gentle brightness. Nor shapes of men nor beasts we ken, the ice was all between. In these lines, the sailor further tells that no shapes of men or beasts could be seen there. Only ice was seen all around the ship. The word beasts means animals. The meaning of the word ken is sea. The ice was here, the ice was there, the ice was all around. In these lines, the sailor says that the ice was here and the ice was there. Actually, the ice was all around. It cracked and growled and roared and howled like noises in a swound. In these lines, the mariner tells that when the ice cracked, it made a growling or angry sound. Here, the meaning of the word growled is made angry noises. It roared and cried as persons cry in a fainting fit. The word swooned means a fainting fit. At length did cross an albatross, through the fog it came. In these lines, the sailor further narrates to the wedding guest that at last an albatross came. It came there from the fog. Albatross is a huge seabird with wide wings. As if it had been a Christian soul, we hailed it in God's name. In these lines, the sailor says that the albatross came there as if it had been a Christian soul. The sailors hailed the bird in God's name. Here, the meaning of the word hailed is welcomed. It ate the food it never had eat, and round and round it flew. The mariner tells that the albatross ate the food that the sailors gave to it. The bird had never eaten such a food. He adds on that the albatross flew all around the ship. The ice did split with a thunder fit. The helmsman steered us through. In these lines, the mariner says that at last, the ice broke into pieces with a thundering noise. The helmsman steered the ship out of the iceberg safely. 
The phrase thunder fit means like a thundering. Hensmen are the men steering the ship. The word steered means drove. And a good south wind sprung up behind, the albatross did follow. In these lines, the sailor narrates that a good south wind started blowing behind the ship. The albatross continued following the ship. The phrase sprung up means blew up. And every day for food or play came to the mariner's hollow. In these lines, the mariner says that the albatross came near the ship every day at the call of the mariners. It came for food or play. The word hollow means shout or call. In mist or cloud, on mast or shroud, it perched for vespers nine. In these lines, the sailor narrates that the albatross used to come in mist or in cloudy weather and sat on the mast or the sail. It sat for nine evenings at the time of the church service. The meaning of the word shroud is sail. Here, the word perched means sat. The phrase Vespers 9 refers to the evening church service time. Whilst all the night through fog smoke white glimmered the white moonshine. In these lines, the mariner further narrates that all night the white moonlight shone through the fog smoke. Here the meaning of the word glimmered is shown. God save the ancient mariner from the fiends that plague thee thus. In these lines, the wedding guest was scared to look at the old mariner's face. He prayed that God might save him from the evil spirits that were torturing him. Here, the meaning of the word fiends is devils. The word plague means torture or trouble. Why look'st thou so with my crossbow? In these lines, the wedding guest asked the mariner why he was looking so horrible. The crossbow is a bow and arrow with a trigger. I shot the albatross. The old mariner replied that he took his crossbow and shot the albatross dead. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos, please subscribe our YouTube channel. Thank you.